The Lord be with you. Welcome, and thanks for spending some time in worship with us today. I want to remind you to make sure to tune in next Sunday, because our guest preacher is the Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of the ELCA. You don't want to miss that one. Today we celebrate and commemorate the day of Pentecost. We see our red paraments up and, um, and those, those uh, depictions of the Holy Spirit. And Pentecost comes from the old Hebrew word meaning 50. And they commemorated after 50 days following the Passover where they received the, the law from God, where Moses received the law from God. Um, we celebrate Pentecost as the, the culmination of our, of our Easter celebrations, 50 days after Easter. Um, and it was for that Pentecost celebration that folks were all gathered, all the pilgrims from all around came to Jerusalem and were celebrating, and that's when, that's when the Holy Spirit was given. That's what we hear today from, from John's Gospel. We hear about that gift of the Holy Spirit. We worship, as always, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your wills and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On the evening of the very first Easter, the day of the resurrection, um, the risen Lord appeared to his disciples as they were locked away in a room uh, fearing for their lives. He gave them a commission. He gave them a benediction. He gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were all together and the doors were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. He breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they're forgiven. If you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I remember that exact terrible moment when I realized that there was enough air in this world for both myself and my brother. That it was possible for us to both happily receive and breathe the, the same air. That there was enough for both of us and plenty more. And not only that we could breathe the same air, but that we should breathe the same air. I was 14 and my brother was 11. And up to that point in our lives together, I made sure that my brother knew that my breathing his air was my right, but him breathing my air was a privilege. And I, I reminded of him of that often. And not infrequently I would do it either with my hands on his throat or my foot on his neck. I finally realized in the blink of an eye where I was powerless to do anything about it, how much I valued Peter's ability to breathe and how much I valued him when I learned that he'd been in an accident 
and I was left wondering whether he'd ever breathe again. I guess I, I mean, I, I'm thankful I, I had an awakening that day. And I'll tell you that he did breathe again. He's still breathing to this day very loudly sometimes. Sorry, Pete. And he came through that accident miraculously well, but even so, those questions hung in the balance for what seemed like forever. And it was during that in-between time that I began to learn how to love my brother. And I think about that a lot, knowing that there are other beloved children of God out there whose ability to breathe is treated like a privilege to be given or taken away by somebody else rather than a gift from God. Now, I do not know whether this world will ever finally come to the point where everybody can finally breathe. I hope it does, and I pray it does. I don't know if it will, but there are two things that I do know. One, that we still live in an I can't breathe world. And two, that that means that Jesus isn't done with us yet. Because whenever there is someone struggling to breathe, there Jesus is. That night that he appeared to his disciples, they were so scared they couldn't, they couldn't breathe for fear that their lives were in danger like their Lord's and that it was all going to be over in the blink of an eye. And, and he showed up to them and the first thing he said is, peace. And then he breathed on them and gave them the spirit. In this gospel text today, Jesus goes so far as to say that if we are the church, that's where we'll be also. That we will be where there are people struggling to breathe, offering life, and breathing upon them the Holy Spirit that we've, that we've received, right? That's that's the gift of Pentecost. That's the gift of the Spirit that we've received. God's Spirit, not to hoard it, not to pass it out as a, as a commodity, but to give it away freely as it's been given to us. That, that is the work of the church, right, in a nutshell. You can boil it down just as simply as that. Living in the Spirit means a commitment to God and to neighbor. This is the commitment of Jesus' life. He was going to be faithful to God to his very last breath, whatever that might entail, and he was going to be faithful to all of us to that very last breath also. Living in the Spirit means a commitment to God and neighbor. It means uh, abiding, sticking to it, sticking with it, sticking with one another, for the sake of our neighbors and a recognition that sharing our little patches of this earth and the moments of our lives matter, that it matters even when we distress, that those are important things to do, that those are worth living for even when we are distressed, maybe even especially when we're distressed. It means finding ways to exist together. Not busy excusing each other. Not just figuring out how to exist beside each other, but really for each other. You know what I mean? And that is no small task. As you well see, and as you well know, 
existing for the sake of other people, for the sake of your brothers and your sisters and your neighbors. It is no small task. It is difficult work, and it is important work. And by the grace of God, it is our work. It is your work. It is my work. It is our work. Because the the out there world, that one that the disciples were so afraid of that night, that out there world, it's still there. And it's still strong. And when things get a little bumpy in this world that, that we know and that we love, and people ask me about the future of the church, what does it look like? I just point to how much work God has yet to do. Is there a future for the church? Well, yeah. Look how much work there still is left to do. God isn't done with the world yet, just like I know he isn't done with me yet, just like you know he isn't done with you yet. And if you don't know that, well, that's a promise. I'll give you that one today. That's what we try to say to each other uh, through our words and through our actions each and every day. That whatever it is that we know and that we experience and that we see and hear, there's more to it. God isn't done with the world yet, just like he isn't done with us yet, just like he isn't done with the church yet. What a privilege it is that we have, we being tasked in so many ways to show the world that there is room, that there is room for everyone to breathe. And that breathing, it's nothing more, nothing less than the gift of the author of our every breath. And it is meant for everyone. This life is a gift, and this I think we know, but what we often miss is that life, I often miss anyway. I try to remind myself, I try to remember, try to remind one another as church, don't we? That what we often miss is that life is only ever and always meant to be lived together. That this air that we all breathe is meant to be shared. And Jesus says so. Gracious God, grant that we would have the wisdom to see this and the courage in your name to live it. Amen.
We take now a few moments to focus our hearts and minds in offering to God what he has first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Your commitment to this congregation is what allows us to be generous to others through our ministries. We invite you to support the ministry we do by writing a check and dropping it in the mail, or by clicking the donate button on our website, or by downloading and utilizing the Give Plus app on your smartphone or tablet. Our Savior's Lutheran Church is very grateful for your generous offerings. Gathered here and now as God's people in Christ Jesus, Together we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we now join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. I'll conclude each intercession saying, Lord, in your mercy, and I'd ask you please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, we call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, and breath. Heal all of creation by your Holy Spirit, especially those who can't breathe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, and all, for care, all who care for those who are in need. 
We pray also for all who long for comfort, especially those whose voices are now stifled, and for George Floyd, who now breathes easy, resting in your eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call upon your spirit of righteousness. Where we are divided, unite us. Where we are prideful, humble us. Where we turn our eyes away from injustice, turn our hearts to see there our Savior, comforting those who are wronged and inviting us to do a part in making things right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call upon your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary into her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet as part of this congregation inside of these doors and out. Lord, su surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call upon your spirit of hope. As you've led your saints in all times and in all places, stir within us the desire to follow in their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, receive now the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sweet.